Uh, we're going to talk about racism in football now. Is it still a problem? Because a new report by MPs on the Commons Culture, Media and Sport Committee thinks it is, and that bosses at the Football Association uh, need to do much more to tackle it. Now, let's uh, talk to Lord Herman Oosley. Uh, Lord Oosley is the, uh, uh, from the campaign. He is the chair of the campaign Kick It Out, and there he is in our central London studio. Um, how far have we come, Lord Oosley? Is it, is it getting better at all? Well, good morning, Eamon, and I think it's very clear that the Select Committee, in considering where we're at with regards to racism and other forms of abuse in football, that we made enormous progress. The Kick It Out campaign's been running now for nearly 20 years, it'll be 20 years next year, and undoubtedly the work that's been put in has got all the authorities around the table. It's got all the clubs committed, for instance, in a, in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, during October, we'll be into the weeks of action, the one game, one community, which all professional clubs participate. But the fundamental focus of the Select Committee's report is about the role of the Football Association, the governing body, the regulator, yeah. in taking proactive action to step up those areas where there needs to be more activity. Uh, such as giving leadership on disciplinary matters, uh, opening opportunities for coaching and management, uh, and generally raising the standard of the morality that it needs to lead on above anything else in yeah, making yeah. sure that unacceptable and abusive behaviour is not accepted in football anymore. And consistency, I, I'm sure, in, in all of that. I, I just want to bring in Jackie Beltrao, our sports uh, presenter here, because I think we were talking earlier about um, if you get at um, football supporters from a young age, maybe this helps a lot in this particular issue. Yeah, I was just wondering if you've done any research into is there a particular age you need to target? Because from our experience, my name is experience with our children playing football, you know, junior school children don't really see colour and it's not something they would even think about. But then when they go to secondary school, that's something, I know, they sort of learn racism, if you like. That's, that's when the insults come in. They learn they can hurt other children that way. Well, we, the one thing we can say for sure is we're all born prejudice-free. Um, from the moment we step out of that womb, someone's actually filling our heads with different sorts of things which form our views, our opinions and our attitudes. And clearly as we get older, uh, those form in a way in it from the influences that we have. So from our point of view, we work in education with all groups of people, uh, adults, right down to the earliest uh, opportunity to help to educate young people to have open minds and the, the importance about young people in sport and certainly in football is that they, they are less inclined to be uh, uh, using abusive uh, uh, behaviour uh, and expressing themselves in ways that we see reflected sometimes in the professional game and we, yeah. certainly, we certainly see the examples that are set but at that level is ones that the professional game have to also reflect. Well, so much at that level. Um, what about your level? Now, I know you personally, and I know you to be a big football fan, but actually I'm sitting thinking here, looking at you, and I would be shocked if I was at a match with you and you, the colour of your skin uh, somehow was an issue to people around me. Um, has it ever been an issue, whether, whether you, you, being you as a supporter or you know, whether you were having a kickabout in your, your younger days? Well, throughout, throughout life, that, that has been a problem. The experience of racism has been a problem, not just for me, but for many other people. But in my own personal experience, yes, uh, growing up in school, yes, playing uh, at local level for junior clubs and also uh, at a senior amateur level, and, and certainly as a fan going to football, there were many times when I said, I can't do this anymore. And part of the reason why Kick It Out was set up was, was, was due to the yeah. experience of finding going to football unacceptable so horrendous and at that time obviously violence was also uh, much more at a higher uh, and unacceptable level. We've moved a long you, way now you know, but we it's, have, we it's have still moved, a factor. Yeah, yeah. I understand we have moved a long way and we move, you know, it's two steps forward and maybe three back with the introduction of something like social media and Twitter. That's a big concern for you, isn't it? Well, it's a concern for everyone because it's not just about racism in football, it's about all sorts of abuses that go on uh, with using social network and football has to take a stance and be seen to be leading the way in setting a moral tone, certainly for its sport, because it's so much associated with negativity uh, when these things are done. And we've, we've seen many instances, and in recent times one has to compliment the Football Association, it's, it's now taking a stance uh, on these issues, and I think if it maintains what you said, that consistency that's necessary, I think people will recognise that certainly when associated with a game of football, they shouldn't be engaging in... in, in 
in ways with okay. in its communication that will be detrimental to other people. Lord Osley, I've got to cut across you there. We've come to the end of the programme. Thank you very much indeed. Good luck with your work uh, on Kick It Out, and uh, thanks for joining us this morning. Here's the weather.